and I head up the TMS side of Storm. So TMS is a group of teenagers and young people that come together in a safe space to work on their performing arts skills and their faith. So this year has been a bit crazy. We've had a lot of changes, but all together we've stuck together as a family and I've loved every minute of it. I love teaching them and I love choreographing the dances for them. My favourite part of this year has got to be Christmas because it's different to anything we've ever done before and it was a bunch of different styles of music and dance put into one piece. I love TMS because it's such a great place to come if you're not very confident and you're having a bad time because we're just such a great family and it just cheers you up and makes things better. I just want to thank the TMSs for being so great and hardworking. This year has been amazing and I can't wait for the next. Thank you, bye. Club, our year got off to a flying start with all the usual madness of crazy dancing, joke telling, stories and performance learning. Our summer months were spent on the Steen Gardens with the parachute games and our first theme of the year was Nothing is Impossible. For this theme we learnt performance pieces such as Not By Might which we then performed on the streets and at the residential homes. The theme also followed through into our Mary Poppins Holiday Club which was a great success with record numbers filling up our new home of St Andrews. Our second theme was Trash, which inspired our new performance leader, Amy Powell, to choreograph new pieces for our Christmas performances that we did at Amelia Court. And none of it would be possible without our team leaders. We lost some this year, but we also gained some, and thank you to them for their hard work. Just to reflect a little on what's been happening in Storm over the last year for our AGM. Actually quite a difficult year to report on. We've had been through a lot of stuff, um, some very difficult things, some sad things, some people have moved on and that's been quite hard. And so as I look back, there are a lot of things I can be very excited about and pleased about what's happened in Storm during through during the year through our community work and our charity work and our church but rather than kind of highlighting all those things because we have some other words coming from Amy and Grace and other people about this year I think what I really wanted to do was just um, recap our vision and remind ourselves of why we do what we do so there was a day um, probably a couple of months ago when I was feeling quite low and wondering where Storm was going and what was going on and whether it was still a vision that we should be doing and I got up and a magazine had arrived through the post, um, Christian magazine, not one I normally enjoy uh, but I picked it up and just started reading and one of the articles really grabbed my attention and it was about a little church in Stornoway which is about as far north as you can get in our country on a Scottish island of Lewis and their vision was exactly the same as ours. It was based on the same book, Conspiracy of Kindness, it was about doing seven days a week church, it was about being community, it was not um, emphasising that people needed to come to church but people could meet Jesus and um, find out about God's love through practical help. So I was really blown away by that and I thought gosh that is a real vision and this so similar to ours and the roots so similar to ours I thought it must be still alive and well so I turned the page and opened another article this is about a group uh, who work in community in small teams of 12 go into communities live in the communities and um, 
again very practical approach to their faith helping out in very practical ways and then um, saying that the Bible verse that everything they did was based on was this one which is Ezekiel 36 35 which says they will say this land that was laid waste has become like the Garden of Eden and I was like oh my goodness that is the verse that we first painted we got um, a graffiti artist to paint on the first garden we ever did and it's like it felt almost like God was sitting on my shoulder and saying look this is this is good. This is what my Holy Spirit is asking you to do. Keep going. Don't give up. Uh, so I felt so much better by reading both of those things. And then I got into the book that I was currently reading about building kingdom communities and read the amazing story of the guy who wrote the book, a guy called Mike Breen, who's someone I've loved his books for years. Um, read a book about youth work years and years ago and remember, always remember a phrase where he said people are not rejecting Jesus they're rejecting the package we wrap him in and that has always resonated with me and this is now a book of a man looking back on many years of service talking about how to build kingdom movements and he just tells the story of how it began which began in absolute failure um, very clever man three degrees um, trained for so many years, became a vicar and everything he put his hand to just failed. And uh, one day during this difficult time he was in the garden trying to clear it, um, ready for his uh, young daughter who was getting old enough to go exploring on her own in the garden and he managed to <laughs> cut the grass down and find some ants nest, tried to treat them with petrol and basically set his whole backyard alight and by a series of accidents also set his neighbour's yard alight and in the middle of all of it just called out a prayer to God at which point the fire stopped and he went inside to make a cup of tea. But it subsequently became clear that he had burned himself horrendously on his legs. He spent months in hospital, isolated because he got infections, lying at a 45 degree angle, completely unable to do anything, unable to see his wife or his child. And he's lying on his back thinking, oh my goodness, God, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? Everything I do is a failure. And God said to him really clearly, four words, let me do it and as I read those words on that difficult morning I thought that's it that's the key whenever this starts to overwhelm me and I wonder how on earth we're going to do it and who's going to journey with us I need to remember that God said let me do it I see the world in love. I see the world in freedom.